What's the chance of X occurring given that Y occurred? For instance, given the statistics on terror attacks, what's the chance that it was committed by a Muslim? We're going to find the answer to this and much more as we look at Bayes' theorem. You find yourself wondering, perhaps, so Bayes' theorem, huh, like what's the point? The point is that it allows for the unbiased evaluation of evidence, independence in a word. Of course, to properly use the theorem, you need to know how it works. Let's take a look at an example. Gator. Some think it's a myth, others swear by it. Let's take a look at the facts. The New York Times reports that 60% of people can identify sexuality correctly. Okay? Well, that's not very good, is it? However, about 10% of people can identify sexuality correctly 80% of the time. Okay, well, that's a little bit better. Now, let's see what Bayes' theorem has to say about this. Let's create a study with 10,000 subjects. About 95% of the population is straight, the other 5% is gay. Now, let's assume another 10,000 people start guessing their sexuality. If we assume all the guessers are good, they will guess correctly 80% of the time. This means that the number of people who are straight and identified as such will be about 9,500 times the probability, 0.8. So that makes uh, the total number of straight people identified as straight 7,600. However, we're also going to have 1,900 straight people identified as gay, since the guessers are going to be incorrect 20% of the time. Okay, so this is looking really bad, since we only have 500 actual gay people in the first place. We have more people identified as gay than actual gay people. Now, let's, act, let's, let's give the Gator supporters the benefit of the doubt. We're going to assume that all gay people will be identified as gay by our guessers. This is completely unrealistic, but it's going to give us the best odds for our gaydar supporters. This means we're going to have 500 people identified as gay, and zero identified as straight. So collecting everything up, we see that the total number of people identified as straight is 2400. The total number of gay people is 500. So now we can calculate the chance that someone identified as gay is actually gay. It's about 21%, which really isn't that good at all. Which is to say, if you're trying to find gay people, Gator probably isn't your best chance. Now that we've done an example, let's look at the mathematical statement of Bayes' theorem. The green part on the left states that given evidence E, what's the probability of H? And then the right-hand side tells you how to calculate that in terms of other probabilities. Now, it's a lot easier to just do some examples, so we're going to keep doing that. But keep this in the back of your mind if you ever want to look at it in more detail. So next up on the chopping block is the wage gap. Let's look at how it's distributed among women. Once again, let's interview 10,000 people. They're all going to be hypothetical women, and we're going to investigate their wage gaps. Let's split these women into two groups, women with and women without children. According to the Times, 47.6% of women don't have children. This leaves a slight majority of women with children. Now, PolitiFact determined that after controlling for all possible factors, women without children make 94% of the same uh, amount of money as a man in the same position. Now, this means she's taking a 6% pay gap solely based on discrimination. For women with children, the New York Times showed that for each child, a woman takes a 4% cut in salary. It's also interesting to note that men get a 6% raise for every child they have. Americans have about 2.5 kids, so this creates a 15% wage gap for women with children. In other words, they make about 85% the amount a man working the same job in the same position makes. We can compute the total number of women who report significant wage discrimination to be 1,072. 
We can also calculate the number of women with children and a significant wage gap to be 786. So now we can use Bayes' theorem to calculate the probability that given a woman has significant wage discrimination, that woman also has children. It turns out to be near 75%. This means the primary reason for the wage gap in the U.S. is due to discrimination against women who have children. Now that we know the straightforward method for Bayes' theorem, let's use a corollary of Bayes' theorem to investigate terrorism. The U.S. Census reports that about 1% of Americans are Muslim. The U U.S. also has about 300 million citizens. Let's assume most non-Muslim citizens are lawful, not terrorists. Only about one in a million non-Muslims are terrorists. And let's say that the chance that a Muslim citizen is lawful is 1 minus C. This implies that there is a probability C for a Muslim to be terrorist. Okay, so if we gather up all of the terrorists living in the United States, we'll have 297 plus another amount of terrorists who are also Muslim. And so, similarly, we can gather up all of the terrorists that are Muslim, but exclude all the terrorists that are non-Muslim. And so we'll get a similar number, minus 297. Okay, so now we can calculate the chance that someone is Muslim given that they are a terrorist. Doing the calculations, we see that we get Muslim terrorists over the total number of terrorists, and we get a number. And then, according to the FBI, about 6% of terrorist attacks are committed by Muslims. So equating these two expressions, uh, we get the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side here. So this implies that about 6.3 terrorists exist per million Muslims. Now, this is higher than the number of non-Muslim terrorists per million non-Muslims, except both probabilities here are very small. To put that in perspective, we can use the above to calculate that there are about 19 Muslim terrorists in the U.S. Compare that to the 297 non-Muslim terrorists also living in the States. Well, hope you found that interesting. Uh, I think the part I like most about Bayes' theorem is that it's a mathematical result. You can argue with the statistics all day, but the theorem and its results are unassailable. In other words, it's good science. In the words of Mr. Tyson, the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you tr choose to believe in it. Well, if you like the video, go ahead and share it. I think everyone should know about the wonders of this theorem. The world would certainly be a better place if everyone knew about it. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more insightful math like this. Just press that button. See you next time.